what to know if you drive an EV and live in Hurricane Milton's path. If you have an electric car and it gets flooded, don't try to plug it in or start it or run it. Out of the 50 or so fires that were reported in the wake of Helene, about 11 of those, or about 25% of those uh, fires were caused by EVs. Turns out that uh, the mud actually helped him because the mud being caked on the side of his Rivian uh, actually sealed it from the water getting into the, into the cabin of the vehicle. Hi, I'm David with EV World News. And I am back today with our founder and chief editor, Bill Moore. How's it going today, Bill? Hey, I'm here. I'm alive. I'm happy. Let, let's talk about this talk, uh, article about what to know if you drive an EV and live in Hurricane Milton's path. Now, did you look through this article? Uh, yes, I have. Yeah. One of the things that came out of Helene was the fact that you had these warnings being posted about if you have an electric car and it gets flooded, don't try to plug it in or start it or run it. And I finally found in one of those articles that uh, there was a report, now I'm trying to think, that out of the 50 or so fires that were reported in the wake of Helene, about 11 of those, or about 25% of those uh, fires were caused by EVs. Now, it didn't say which ones. So it could have been a number of them. Um, but yeah, I thought it would be helpful if we kind of talk about that. Uh, there's some articles that we've posted that give suggestions on what to do um, to make sure that you aren't one of the casualties. You know, it's, it's something that we're concerned about. EVs and hurricanes don't go well together, but then they're not, you know, the fire threat is not limited to uh, the just EVs. Uh, 75% of the fires that, they had down that they've recorded in the wake of a lean were caused by internal combustion engine vehicles. So it's not a particular, it's not just re restricted to EVs, but obviously you don't want to take a $70,000 car and have it total because it got flooded by salt water. And you certainly don't burn your house down. Well, a lot of the information I found on this was sort of generic. It's like, don't let your car get flooded. I mean, you're like, you're, if you're, it's like, but you don't want to do that with a gas car either. So I don't know where that was, uh, you know, revolutionary advice. Yeah. I was going to say that, you know, there was a video that got a lot of, of spread of somebody's security camera caught their Tesla in their garage bursting into flames. And so they left the impression that there were, you know, hundreds of EVs and, and it was encouraging to see, well, yes, there were fires. Um, but it was only about 25% of the automobile fires that were electric cars that were caused by the flooding. So yeah, get it to high ground. If you, if you live in an area that's, you know, above the uh, tidal surge um, area, then, you know, make sure you get it in a garage somewhere under shelter. Um, so yeah, most of those advice is generic, nothing in particular. One of the things, the articles that I came across was the one about the guy in Asheville, uh, who was who found his Rivian fifty uh, no a hundred yards away from from where he, where he had parked it in the storm? Uh, it was this this the one where the Rivian is literally coated looks like about two inches of mud on the side of the vehicle, and of course his concern was is that you know if I lost it, turns out that uh, the mud actually helped him. Because the mud being caked on the side of his Rivian uh, actually sealed it from the water getting into the in the cabin of the vehicle, so he was able to uh, you know recover his vehicle and apparently got in it. Don't know if that would have been maybe the thing I would have done, but I guess you don't have a choice. You know, you got it's your vehicle, start it up, see what happens. He started up and it runs fine. Nice. Um, there was something here um, in in the Tampa Bay area. Pinellas and Hillsborough counties are both opening up garages to the public to be able to go and park your vehicle in a parking structure to get it up and out of the water. So that's in Pinellas and Hillsborough counties. You know, and, and the kind of generic advice was, like you said, if it does become submerged, don't try to drive it. Now... <laughs> You know, just contact your insurance company and let them tell you what to go do at that point. You know, one of the other things was uh, people, when the la with this last hurricane, Helene, 
powering up the refrigerators and other things and using uh, the power to not lose all of their uh, produce. But a, a lot of those people were probably a little further further in. And, you know, uh, depending on where their situation is, I was talking to somebody yesterday that I know owns a couple of Teslas that's down there prepping for the storm. And I was like, well, if you had solar, which he doesn't have solar, he doesn't have a bi-directional charger. Okay. But he can plug some stuff in. My, my thought was, uh, you know, we were talking about, he was like, well, then I couldn't drive away if I needed to. And it's like, well, you know, <laughs> the gas car people aren't going to be able to drive away either because those gas stations won't work. Well, yeah. And there was, there was a report I was listening to this morning where there are people that are going around trying to get ready for the storm and looking for gas. And there's no, you know, despite the governor saying, oh, there's plenty of gas. We have gas available. Some people are having trouble finding it. And if you, you know, your power goes out, the grid goes down, then you're not going to go anywhere either with, with a gas car because gas stations depend on pumps and pumps depend on electricity. And if there's no electricity, you're not going to go anywhere. So uh, I think they advise you, you know, if you have an EV, obviously one thing is try to get it charged to at least 80% capacity. Again, park it, you know, on a higher ground as you possibly can under shelter if you possibly can, if you live in Pinellas or Hillsborough, borough counties, maybe take advantage of the uh, the offer that uh, the businesses and the and the county is offering to you know get it up out off the ground. There's also an article I posted if you happen to have an electric bike, advice on uh, you know get get it to high ground if you've got a second story building. But if you can't do that, if it's too heavy or you don't have that take the battery off and, you know, move the battery someplace where the battery will at least not be submerged underwater. Yeah, I was advised putting the battery up on a high cabinet or on top of a high cabinet. Hi, I'm David with EV World News. If you like this video, then please press the like button. If you like the content and would like to see more videos on electric vehicles, then please hit the subscribe button. If you have some feedback for us, please let us know in the comments. Have a great day.